All right. Hello, and welcome back, my business associates. What's going on? How are you guys doing today? If you're new here, thanks for joining us. Uh, this series here we call the decapitation, where we just open a new bottle. So on today's decapitation, we have none other than Glen Allakey. This is Glen Allakey 12. Um, this is the 2021 batch. This is my first time trying any Glen Allakey product. Um, like I said, this is the 12 coming in at 46% alcohol by volume or 92 proof. Um, it's actually not available on the LCBO website. Uh, the 15 was available, but it is no longer available. So um, this I picked up from Alberta, 89.99 is what it retails for. And being a 12 year aged uh, single malt scotch, um, that's not that bad. This is, um, predominantly aged in sherry. So let's get right into this. All right, welcome back. Like I said, doing the Glen Allakey 12. Um, this is a Speyside single malt scotch aged um, in predominantly sherry. It's a mix of uh, PX sherry cast as well as Oloroso. They also use uh, some virgin American oak. The virgin is white American oak and the um, the uh, form I was reading actually said they do also use um, a little bit of ex-bourbon casks, first and second fill ex-bourbon casks. So it's kind of um, like Belvini, the Belvini Double Wood 12, I guess, uh, where they're using the ex-bourbon and not, they're not really specific about whether they finish it in the ex-bourbon or if they, uh, like how long they mature it in the sherry before they switch and all that. They're not really um, specific because I think what they do is um, their master, one of their master distillers and or technically blender at this point um, blends to get the same, not same, but a similar house taste. So apparently batch one of this was really good stuff. So we'll see how this stuff turns out. So what I'm going to do, nice is get a little bit into this glass. And then I'm gonna put a little bit into this glass and put some water into that. Pretty sleek looking bottle, uh, pretty nice. Um, so Master Distiller, Billy Walker actually just joined, helped to buy this company. Um, he was also a master distiller at Glendronic as well as Glen Reick. And he has done his fair share of blending. So at this point, um, at this distillery, he is pretty much just blending. These are technically just blended by him um, and distilled by their previous blender or er, uh, distiller. So. Now this is a non-chill filtered uh, natural color, so no no caramel coloring added. It's naturally colored. That's always always a good thing, you know. You can't can't complain about that for sure. So yeah, so pretty much over the last few years since Billy Walker uh, picked up the company, uh, Glen Allakey has decided to focus more on. 
uh, quality rather than quantity and flavors and building their yeast strains, stuff like that. They really just want to uh, get into the quality scotch market, which good on them. Uh, like I said, this is eighty nine ninety nine retail, which is a fairly budget price for um, a Canadian single malt scotch. And not to mention non-chill filtered um, and natural colored. 12 year age statement this is a pretty budget uh pretty budget scotch honestly so i have to i have to say i'm pretty excited for this one um i tend to like sherry finished things um i actually my first sherry finished product was a um Oloroso Sherry St. Remy Brandy, and I really did enjoy that, and I haven't had too much experience with Sherry stuff since then, so we're going to see, we're going to see how this is. From what I could find, the batches seem to be somewhat similar, they don't uh, vary too much, so uh, it actually, Ralphie gave this uh, 2019 single malt of the year, or just whiskey of the year, which is pretty you know, if Ralphie says this is whiskey of the year, I'm, I'm picking it up. You you bet your bottom dollar. Um, I should mention this is a 700 mil bottle. So, like, the travel size, I guess, for some reason. Um, and not 750. Uh, it got 93 points at the Ultimate Spirits Challenge. Um, I'm not sure what year that was. It got gold at the 2020 International Spirits Challenge. It got... 95 points at the um, International Wine and Spirits Competition for 2022. So, 95 points. It's pretty good. San, Fris Francis San Francisco World Spirits Competition uh, 2020, it got double gold. And 2019, it got gold. Um, it was category winner at the 2022 uh, World Whiskey Awards. So, that's another big one. And silver at the at the 2021 World Whiskey Awards. So, I mean, a silver and then a, a category winner. Um, I mean, this thing's gotten lots of uh, praises, and uh, that's just this bottle alone. I'm not even touching on the uh, 10, which is supposedly even better, but it's like you can't find that here, let alone the the um, cask strength 10. So, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. I'm gonna try what I can get my hands on. Overall, Glen Allocky, over the next few years, is probably only going to improve, so I'm super excited for that. Hopefully, uh, where I live in Ontario, it becomes more readily available, but, I mean, we don't, we don't really know. We never really know here in Ontario. Sometimes, you know, we get the good batch releases on the LCBO, and sometimes we don't, and a lot of the time, honestly, we don't. Like the Elijah, Elijah Craig barrel proofs are super limited when they're released. They don't stay in stock for more than like an hour. Or so even the Blantons, the Weller, um, not even the Weller full proof, those are allocated for sure. But anyways, without further ado, let's get into the nose on the watered down. Definitely getting that sherry, sherry influence. Almost like a medicinal cherry or grape note, like Benelin, Bene, Benadryl, the liquid one. Not in a bad way. Raisin for sure. Mm. Cinnamon and baking spices. Uh, caramel in there. You get like a little bit of grain. Nothing too intense. It's very dried fruit, sherry forward, raisin, sultana raisins specifically. Mm. Yeah. And the baking spice comes in with the caramel. It's almost uh, like a raisin butter tart esque. That's pretty nice. Now let's try the not uh, watered down one here. Oh wow, yeah. Um, definitely a lot more um, oak. A lot more of that sherry influence, like a brighter cherry uh, rather than the medicinal. Lots of dried fruit. I'm getting raisins, dried apricot, dried pineapple, almost like a Jamaican rum. Mm. 
or something in there. The spice still. It's kind of reminding me of like maybe a fruitcake esque smell. I don't like fruitcake, but this smells good. I'm getting some nuttiness. Um, I want to say some almond. Like if you've ever blanched almonds and like you bake them. That's the smell I'm getting. Whereas the water added is more medicinal. This is more uh, bright red wine. Mm. This not watered down, phenomenal. Oh, so many layers. I'm getting dark chocolate now. Mm. I eat a lot of dark ch chocolate, especially being on keto. And sometimes I'll um, splurge into the the uh, lint makes extra dark chocolate with dried fruits in it. Sometimes I get the raspberry, there's orange, there's all, all different types. I'm getting the uh, one with the mixed fruit uh, and almonds. I have something a little bit similar, but this is orange with dark chocolate. But the one I'm referring to is um, specifically got slivered almonds, I think raspberry, cranberry, that kind of thing. Just, just bright red dried fruits in the dark chocolate. That's what I'm getting with this. Um, overall, very nice. I really like that. I'm getting some shortbread in it. Everyone always talks about red breast and shortbread. I still have yet to open the red breast. Still very excited. Um, but yeah, I'm getting some shortbread in it. Just buttery shortbread. Very nice. Not like not like the uh, tins of the pre-made shortbread, but like fresh shortbread, like, like homemade. That is just... I could smell that all day. That smells so good. All right, well, let's go ahead and get our first sip of the watered-down uh, Glen Alecky 12-year. Cheers. You know, for something that's only 46%, and I watered it down, it is so oily. Like, you can even see how it coats the glass with all that water in it. You can tell how much water's in it just because the color difference. Put a generous amount of water. Bright red fruits, a little medicinal, raisin, still the dried apricot, nuttiness, caramel. With the water, you're not getting as much of that sherry influence. There's a little bit of oak and oak spice in there. The warm baking spice follows through into the palate. But the mouth coating effect, given that I put water in it, is great. I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed, and I really, really love a thick um, mouth coating feel. So... That is just buttery, smooth coating the mouth. Um, not not necessarily the taste of butter. Uh, I did say I get butter on the um, non-diluted uh, nose, but not in the palate of the diluted. So let's go ahead and try the undiluted straight from the bottle. Cheers, probably rested about 10-15 um, minutes. Wow. Yeah, that's so much, uh, so much brighter fruit, uh, fruit forward, apricot, cherry, um, still the raisins, the raisins come through, baking spice for sure. The sherry comes across a lot more when it's not diluted. The oiliness is, is, um, just as good, honestly, um, as the non-watered down. Dark chocolate, even stronger on the palate. It's actually like a rich dark chocolate fudge or brownie. That's so good. Into the finish right now, I'm getting still that dark chocolate, that rich dark chocolate, some caramel. Um, a little bit of raisin in there. I'm getting a little bit of that sherry and oak influence. A little bit of spice, cinnamon, baking spices. As far as the uh, apricot and pineapple that I got in the nose, not so much on the taste but uh, more red fruits on the, the taste. So no shortbread note on the palate, but uh, like compared to the uh, the Glen Levitt, this is one, not only uh, is the complexity way better, um, the mouthfeel, the oiliness, uh, pff, just blows the Glen Levitt out of the water. It's only 6% uh, more, but it's sitting at five dollars more i think um now the glenlivet could be going up a lot of the scotches in the area are going up right now mccallan has increased like twenty dollars over the last week and a lot of scotches are actually going up so 
I would buy this any day over Glenlivet. The finish isn't super long, but I feel like that I feel like there is enough complexity um, and layers to it uh, that it kind of outshines the length. You know, you you can not only pick apart the nose and the palette, you can really pick apart the layers of the finish. And while you don't have all the time in the world to do it, I mean, it's still very enjoyable and just so smooth. That texture is almost syrupy. I will say that the caramel into the finish actually tapers very fast and the chocolate kind of stays, but after the caramel tapers, you're just kind of left with this um, bitter dark chocolate, like a, just a dark cacao nib uh, type type uh, chocolate, which I really like. I like the uh, pure dark chocolate, Baker's chocolate. Um, being on keto, that's that's what I eat. So yeah, like as far as as far as the finish, that is that is delicious. All right, I went ahead and rated this Glen Allen 12. Uh, this is just the neck pour, so I, I just anticipate what this thing is going to have to offer once it opens up. In my experience, almost every bottle has gotten better as, as it's opened up. Um, can't think of any right now that have gotten worse. So, on the nose, I went ahead and gave this an 88. Very complex, nice, sweet um, nuttiness. Very reminiscent of something you would eat around Christmas time. Uh, lots of warm spices, dried fruits. Uh, even some fresh fruit in there, the dark chocolate, just overall very nice. Uh, the palette, I went ahead and gave it so super complex. The mouthfeel is just thick and syrupy, just how I like it. Um, even diluted with water. Um, I find the flavor changes a lot diluted with water. Uh, it goes from, from more fresh fruit to a more medicinal um, uh, taste. I get lots of... Um, dried fruits there as well the dark chocolate um more of like a rich dark chocolate dark chocolate fudge uh like i said raisins um nothing nothing undesirable on the palate uh and that really does continue into the finish you get some nice bitter chocolate right at the end um with the oak and the baking spice super super yummy finish it's not uh it's not a long finish by any means but there's enough there to really satisfy you for sure and um you know i went ahead and gave the finish an 88 just because i just think there's enough complexity that uh, i'm not so much worried about the length um just because there's so much to taste and look for there of course, a longer length is always going to be nicer. That's what she said. But it's it's enough, you know. Overall, this is going to get a 90. So this is just incredible. I don't know how much this retails for in America, but let me say if you can get your hands on this, um, go for it doesn't matter what batch i think glen Allakey is is producing some great stuff based on all of the reviews that i've seen and read uh i haven't heard anything bad about glen Allakey. and like i said wi within the next few years uh billy walker's uh juice distilled by him is going to start hitting the shelves and being bottled and i think that is going to blow this stuff out of the park like he blended this stuff and it is absolutely amazing but i th i think the stuff that he distilled himself is going to be um, even better and if the price goes up a little bit that's okay i'm not going to be super mad about it but uh where the price hits right now this is super affordable in in uh, my neck of the woods so i totally recommend this if you're in alberta um anywhere outside of ontario you should be able to pick this up for around 70 to 80 bucks sometimes 90 bucks um i think i did get this on sale for 60 bucks actually so but i see it retailing now for around 89.99 so that's going to do it for this decapitation i hope you guys enjoyed and if you did please leave a like i would really appreciate it uh the youtube algorithm loves it and uh, i love it too 
subscribe if you enjoyed and you want to see more whiskey reviews, especially uh, stuff that is available to us here in Ontario, uh, sold by the LCBO. I got lots of that kind of stuff coming, and there's not too many people out there that uh, produce um, LCBO-based uh, content just because there's not that much variety. But I will be taking you over the variety that we do have, given that a lot of the prices are higher than you'll find other places you know you may not want to pull the trigger on a bottle um that is what we would call overpriced um just because lcbo pricing maybe you don't want to pull the trigger on it well i'm going to be here to review almost everything that uh i can find that i think is is interesting at the lcbo so if you have any recommendations of whiskeys being sold at the lcbo leave them down below in the comments i'll be sure to read them and see what i can do and uh if i can pick them up and get a review out there for you but uh until then i hope you guys are having a great week uh have a great weekend and stay safe out there this has been whiskey business and i'm out guys cheers